Hello everyone, welcome to this new video. So today we're going to take a look at configuring virtual machine scale sets as hosted agents on Azure DevOps. I, I've shown a little bit of that before, uh, but today I want to just go a little bit in depth about the whole process and you know what the problem statement is. So we have a, a very small build pipeline right here. Um, this basically, you know, builds and pushes a Docker app that I have on my, you know, GitHub repository, and it pushes that to an Azure Container Registry. And right now, this pipeline is working just fine. So if I go to pipelines, you can see that the pipeline succeeds. If I go to repositories, I can see my images uploaded. So everything's working fine. But um, let's say for some reason now you want to move this to a self-hosted agent. Maybe because pre-deployment you do some steps on a private network or something like that. A very good way to do it if you're on Azure is to just use virtual machine scale sets uh, to manage those um, agents. The problem is that those virtual machine scale set agents do not have all the necessary prerequisites that allow you to build this. So let's take a look at this pipeline quickly. And right off the bat, you can see that it uses Docker. So what if your virtual machine scale set does not have Docker installed in it? It also uses an Azure Container Registry. Well, what if the Azure CLI is not installed in it and so on? So you'll find a very common scenario if you ever use any kind of self-hosted agent that you want to make sure that all the things you need in order for your build to succeed are pre-deployed on the agent. And if you're using Azure Virtual Machine scale sets to do that, a very good way is to use something called Cloudinit. This is the link for the documentation. And Cloudinit is basically a file format. It's a YAML format that allows you to just list down what needs to be done on this agent as soon as it boots. And that allows the agent to be pre-provisioned with all the necessary tools in order for you to build your software before it can be used by Azure DevOps. Here is a sample of a cloud init file, and this uh, cloud init file just goes like this. There is just a hashtag cloud config just to indicate that this is a cloud init file. And we have package update is true. This is similar if you were ever on, on Ubuntu, for example, and you'd say, you know, apt update. And um, we also have package upgrade, which just upgrades those packages, which is package upgrade. So it's as if I'm running those commands on every agent. The, the good thing about it is that this will run for every new agent that is provisioned. So in case you scale up or scale down the virtual machine scale sets that are used as hosted agents, for every new machine that is provisioned, it's always going to be pre-provisioned with that stuff. And you can then indicate what type of packages you want. So, for example, here we want docker.io is one of the important packages that we use. And it might have some prerequisites as well. So you add those, um, like those prerequisites. I know some of them are, are needed for the Azure CLI. Sometimes you cannot find the proper package on the repository. If that's the case, then you can just run a command line. And for example, here, the command line is, you know, to install the Azure CLI for Debian version. That's because I know this is going to be a Debian agent. I'm also installing kubectl. I'm installing Helm and so on. So it's like I'm pre-provisioning all the, all the tools necessary for this agent in order to be um, run any sort of build that I usually use. And you can always, of course, change this uh, even after the virtual machine skill set has been created. Um, so let's go ahead and see how we can do that. Here I'm going to add a resource. And I'm just going to put this in a test resource group that I have pre-created for this. I'm going to delete it later. DevOps agents. That's fine. That's fine as well. I really don't care about the details here. Um, one detail you might care about is the virtual network because more often than not, when you do this sort of thing, you will want to create your virtual machine scale set to a private network because you're mostly doing this thing to be able to build your software um, while reaching maybe private resources or something like that. Next step, that's all fine. Don't care about that. Don't care about that. And now we come to the custom data step and, and this is where it gets interesting. So here you can put like custom data and cloud in it. So all you need to do is just come here, paste this entire thing into here and then create. 
you can download the private key and create a resource um, and create the resource. Um, um, theoretically speaking, you don't need to download the private key because you'll probably never access this manually in, except maybe for logging purposes or something like that, but I'll just download it, it wouldn't hurt. And now I did this deployment manually, but you could have used anything else to do the deployment. You could have used Terraform, you could have used ARM templates, whatever suits you, whatever floats your boat, it's all fine. And now that this has been created, I don't need to do anything to it. Um, I will just want to show you that you can uh, change the cloud in it later on if you choose. In the operating system tab, you can just simply paste a brand new cloud in it right here. And that will only work while it's being provisioned. It's telling you here right there. And that means, well, if you, for existing instances, it will not go ahead and deploy it on them. It will only do it on new VMs that are being provisioned. But that doesn't matter because um, theoretically speaking, you can just come here, delete all instances um, if, if, if they are not up to the proper configuration that you want. And then what will happen is DevOps will just uh, generate brand new agents instead of those ones. And those new ones would be according to the new configuration. So just all you need to do in case you want to refresh your configuration is just to come here, upload a brand new custom data here, press save and then go to instances and delete those existing instances and it would go ahead and create new ones. Uh, so let's go ahead and hook up the VM scale set to Azure DevOps. So we go to project settings, Asian pools, and we're going to add a pool. And that's going to be a new Azure virtual machine scale set. Choose the subscription, the scale set name. And well, I usually use, you know, the same name right here. It doesn't really matter. Automatically te tear down machines after every use. Um, that's fine if you want to every time you do a new build you want to uh, start off fresh with a brand new uh, instance uh, but if you don't mind reusing your instances uh, you can leave that unchecked I also like to leave it off for you know logging purposes just in case I, I want to go in there and grab a log file or something like that to troubleshoot what, whether something has gone wrong um, you can also set the maximum number of virtual machines in the scale set. So, for example, I, don't, I never want to run more than three instances just for cost purposes. And number of agents to keep on standby. So, you know, keep at least one instance on standby. That way I have one instance ready to receive uh, build requests all the time. You can also delay before deleting uh, excess idle images. So now, you know, you've scaled up to three uh, but you, you, in, normally on standby you need only one, so there are two to be deleted. Uh, it won't delete them immediately, it will just wait 30 minutes. Maybe they will get reused within the same 30 minutes, so you don't have to wait um, until the, the image is ready. Um, so that seems a good configuration, I'll just click create right here. And that uh, deploys the DevOps agent. Now it does take some time, because behind the scenes what it does, it installs a virtual machine extension on uh, those a on the on those agents so you will find here a virtual machine extension shortly being pushed here and that virtual machine extension is the the thing that's going to allow uh, devops to control this scale set um we'll just wait a while um usually i wait like you know 30 minutes the first time i do this just to make sure um, everything is done properly before I start, but it generally only takes about five minutes or something. So I'll, I'll just wait a while. So now this has been completed. Uh, as you can see, it only took about two minutes to, to be done. And uh, if you go back here, you will find the extension being deployed, the pipelines agent. So now theoretically speaking, I'm ready on this virtual machine scale set to receive uh, build jobs, uh, parallel jobs. and. Um, let's go ahead and, and configure our pipeline to use it. So you still have to tell the pipeline to use the scale set rather than the normal built-in Azure provided images. And I'll go to edit pipeline. And here you get to choose what kind of agent specification. So first you choose the agent pool. I'm going to choose the DevOps agent. Just double checking all my configuration is correct. Yep, that should do it. And now let's save and queue. Let's go ahead and check the agent job so we can see what the build is doing. Now, theoretically speaking, if I hadn't put the cloud init file, this would fail. 
because it uses Docker and Docker is nowhere to be found. It uses Azure uh, container registries and the Azure CLI is nowhere to be found. But because I've put the cloud in it uh, in there, it, it, it will provision those tools uh, as it's provisioning the VM uh, itself. And uh, one thing you also have to keep in mind is how long it takes for the cloud init file to run. Um, so I, until that's done, I just want to come here and show you if you click on any of the instances. And let's see if we can get any boot diagnostics in here. Yeah, so here's the serial log, and um, it's important to see, well, how long that takes, you know, how many seconds it takes until it actually completes. And also, if you ever face, you know, if you ever did some, like, bad command line in uh, your cloud init, this is a very good way to troubleshoot it, is just to go back here and, you know, check, well, what was it doing uh, during the deployment steps. So here you see reach target cloud config availability dot cloud in it so it, like apparently it identifies that i've passed a cloud init file it's going to go through it line by line do all the necessary things um, to get the tools deployed and so on and you can see like sort of a log file of, of that happening right here and um, the whole process took about a, maybe 120 seconds uh, like two minutes and that's something to keep in mind, because if your build pipeline starts running this um, job quicker than two minutes, it's going to face a problem where, well, the cloud init file has not completed deploying everything yet. Uh, so maybe something will not work. Generally speaking, you want to keep your cloud init files short so that they, you know, uh, run uh, as quickly as possible. There we go. The pipeline has completed successfully. So we can come here and we see, you know, the build operation has been completed, you know, from a Docker perspective. Uh, just a quick disclaimer, I've had to come and add this line right here uh, into the cloud init. The reason being is that by default, Docker does not allow all users on the machine to communicate with it. By running this command, it just enables all the users on the machine to do that. So that's it for today, and I hope you learned something.